Seneca Village was a 19th-century settlement of mostly African-American landowners in the borough of Manhattan in New York City, within what would become Central Park. It was founded in 1825 by free black Americans, the first such community in the city, and at its peak, the community had approximately 225 residents, three churches, two schools, and three cemeteries. Seneca Village was home to the largest number of African-American property owners in New York before the Civil War, and because those black men possessed property, they had the ability to vote. Despite its short history of only 32 years, Seneca Village is understood as a tight-knit community that served as a stabilizing and empowering force in uncertain times. According to research, there were several communities that were displaced to make way for Central Park. The communities were Seneca Village, Harsonville, the Piggery District, and Yorkville. The residents of these communities were forced to leave their homes, and many were not compensated for their losses. Welcome to another episode of Aggressive Intelligence, a channel where we talk about history that is not taught in schools. We would like to thank our subscribers for supporting our channel, and if you are new here, we hope you enjoy learning as much as we do. So sit back, relax, let's get into it. In the heart of Manhattan, there was a vibrant community of free black property owners known as Seneca Village. The community began in 1825 when landowners John and Elizabeth Whitehead subdivided their land and sold it as 200 lots. Among the first few purchasers of the land were Andrew Williams, a 25-year-old African-American shoe shiner, Epiphany Davis, a store clerk, and the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. From there, a thriving, autonomous black community was born along what is now West 82nd to West 89th Street. Seneca Village was an African-American, and to a lesser extent, an Irish community, founded in the mid-1820s that existed until Central Park's creation in 1857. African-Americans were a minority in New York City at the time, and Seneca Village allowed residents to live away from the more built-up sections of downtown Manhattan and escape the unhealthy conditions and racial discrimination they faced there. Seneca Village's remote location likely provided a refuge from this climate. Compared to other African Americans living in New York, residents of Seneca Village seem to have been more stable and prosperous. By 1855, approximately half of them owned their own homes. With property ownership came other rights not commonly held by African Americans in the city, namely, the right to vote. In 1821, New York State required African American men to own at least $250 in property and hold residency for at least three years to be able to vote. Seneca Village was home to the largest number of African American property owners in New York before the Civil War, and because those black men possessed property, they had the ability to vote. Irish and German immigrants moved in too, and white and black villagers attended church side by side. At its height, over 250 people lived in Seneca Village, most of whom were African Americans. However, in 1857, the city used eminent domain to forcibly remove the residents and tear down their homes for the construction of Central Park. The destruction of Seneca Village was made in the name of the greater good, but it dispossessed groups that were historically disadvantaged and discriminated against. It was not just the land that was lost, it was the community and the feeling of community said Reverend Audrey Williamson of Mother AME Zion Church in Harlem, which nearly two centuries ago was in Seneca Village. To think that our ancestors were here, this was their ground. This was where maybe some children played. This is where they worshipped, added Williamson. According to the research, the compensation that Seneca Village residents received varied depending on whether they were landowners or renters. Landowners received compensation for their property, while renters did not. The landowners were paid an average of $700 per lot. However, many argued that their land was undervalued. It is unclear from the research how much compensation renters received, but it is known that all residents were forced to vacate beginning in 1856, and approximately 1,600 people were displaced. According to the research, the residents of Seneca Village were given final notices in mid-1856. It is unclear from the research how much notice the residents were given before they had to leave. However, it is known that all of the inhabitants of the village were evicted by 1857, 
and all of the properties within Central Park were razed. The only institution from Seneca Village to survive was All Angels Church, which relocated a couple of blocks away, albeit with an entirely new congregation, except for one person. There are few records of where residents went after their eviction, as the community was entirely destroyed. Some historians believe that the displaced residents of Seneca Village went to other African-American communities in the region, such as Sandy Ground in Staten Island and Skunk Hollow in New Jersey. Hey guys, are you enjoying the video? If you are, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to watch more videos like this. Okay, let's get back to it. There were other communities that were displaced to make way for Central Park. The creation of Central Park required the acquisition of a significant amount of land, which included several communities. The most affected by Central Park's construction were squatters and hog farmers, as they were never compensated for their evictions. Harsonville was a small community of Irish immigrants that was displaced to make way for Central Park. The village was nestled in Manhattan's former Bloomingdale district between 68th and 81st streets and ran from Central Park West to the Hudson River. It began in 1701 when Cornelius Dykeman bought the land from the Native Americans and built a farmhouse. The area was later named after Jacob Harson, a farmer who settled there in 1763. Harsonville was a small, tight-knit community that was home to a few hundred people. The village was known for its farms, orchards, and gardens, which provided fresh produce for the surrounding area. The community was also home to a few small businesses, including a blacksmith shop and a general store. The displacement of Harsonville was a significant issue, as it represented a loss of property and autonomy for the affected communities. The residents of Harsonville were forced to leave their homes and their community behind, and many were not compensated for their losses. The Piggery District was a community of hog farmers that was displaced to make way for Central Park. The community was located near the present-day site of the Great Lawn. The Piggery District was a dirty, smelly, and unsanitary neighborhood that was home to numerous pig farms. The area was known as Hogtown, Pigtown, or even Stinktown. The community was a nuisance to the surrounding neighborhoods, and fears about bad smells and their impact on public health and real estate led directly to New York City's Piggery War of 1859. After a new city inspector was appointed, he almost immediately set his sights on the Piggery District. He assembled troops of inspectors and police officers who visited each Piggery, confronting the owners and their guard dogs. The hogs themselves posed a challenge as they scattered, running through officers' legs, knocking men over. Despite attempts by the piggery owners to maintain their property and their livelihoods, the city effectively shut the hog farms down that summer. The residents of the piggery district were forced to leave their homes and their community behind, and like Harsonville, many of them were not compensated for their losses. Yorkville was a community of German immigrants that was displaced to make way for Central Park. The community was located near the present-day site of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yorkville was a neighborhood on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York City. Its southern boundary is East 79th Street, its northern East 96th Street, its western 3rd Avenue, and its eastern the East River. Today, efforts are underway to commemorate the community that was displaced to make way for Central Park and to tell their stories. The park first opened for public use in the winter of 1859, when thousands of New Yorkers skated on lakes constructed on the site of former swamps. By 1865, the park received more than 7 million visitors a year. The city's wealthiest citizens turned out daily for elaborate late afternoon carriage parades. The building of Central Park was one of 19th century New York's most massive public works projects. Some 20,000 workers, Yankee engineers, Irish laborers, German gardeners, and native-born stonecutters reshaped the site's topography to create the pastoral landscape. After blasting out rocky ridges with more gunpowder than was later fired at the Battle of Gettysburg, workers moved nearly 3 million cubic yards of soil and planted more than 270,000 trees and shrubs. The park took 15 years to build and cost $14 million, a significant increase from the project's original $5 million budget. Today, Central Park is a popular destination for both tourists and locals. The park offers a wide range of activities, including walking, jogging, cycling, picnicking, and boating. 
The park is also home to several iconic landmarks, including the Central Park Zoo, the Great Lawn, the Bethesda Fountain, and the Central Park Conservatory Garden. Hey guys, thanks for watching to the end. Do you have any information you would like to share? Do you have a subject you would like us to cover? Please don't hesitate to let us know, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you will be the first to know when we drop a new video. See you in the next one.